Hello and welcome to my Gears of War 4 shotgun tips and tricks video. In this tutorial I will go over the different styles of aiming and shotgun shots you can use across matches with in-game examples to help illustrate my points. Now there will be some overlap for my Gears Judgment shotgun tutorial here, but this video should help you better understand how to use the shotgun in Gears 4. Keep in mind that what you're watching is specific to my style of play, so there may very well be certain shots or approaches left outside of this video. So let's get right into it. The first style of aiming is blind firing, which isn't really aiming at all. Blind firing is when you shoot from the hip, and it is best used when you are outnumbered or have enemies so close to you that it would be redundant to aim. The reason it's good to use when you're outnumbered is because it allows for good mobility since you can bounce around quickly without focusing too much on your aim. Blind firing does sacrifice accuracy however, and as you can see in the footage, it also produces a larger spread than aiming down with the sights does. Pay careful attention to the larger spread on the left versus the tighter spread on the right. In Gears 4, the difference in spread is very noticeable. If you're in a shotgun fight that is more than an arm's length, aiming down the sights will reward players who land their shots with a tighter spread, and hence you will do more damage. This brings us to the second method of aiming, which is pop shotting. This is by far my favorite method of aiming, and I highly recommend adopting it in most cases. Pop shotting is when you quickly tap the left trigger to aim, followed by a shotgun shot. It gives you a healthy balance of mobility since you can still strafe and occasionally wall bounce, and it also produces a tighter spread which will give you that damage advantage I was talking about. Now I want to quickly dive into some in-game examples to show you just how effective it is. Notice in these clips how I'm just tracing the enemy players and landing very strong shots and the distance is not much of an issue whether or not they're super up close or super far away. Uh, it's still easy to land shots and that's partly why I love pop shotting so much. It is just a good go-to medium when you need to make sure that you're landing shots, producing damage, but also not so slow around the map uh, like you would be with hard aiming, which is the next uh, style of aiming we're going to go over. The last method of aiming is hard aiming. Hard aiming refers to situations when a player holds the L trigger to aim for an extended period of time. This is useful when you have a lot of time to land a shot. It makes you extremely immobile, however, and you will find that this style of aiming is not used often. In the examples that you're seeing, I have a lot of time here, so I just take my time, hold the L trigger, and aim to finish off the kills. It's also important to know that in Gears 4, lefty hard aiming is alive and well, and very effective in certain circumstances. To lefty hard aim, take cover and have your character look to the left, hold the L trigger, and pull off of the wall, and you've got it. This is great for landing shots while you're concealed, when right hand advantage is not an option. Here's some in-game examples where you actually see me getting a few kills thanks to the lefty hard aim, just showing how useful it actually is in practice. Now on to some of the types of shots you can take. The first shot, and perhaps most useful one in my opinion, is the flick shot. Flick shotting is a defensive move that allows you to quickly get off a shotgun shot, immediately followed by slipping into cover. To perform a flick shot, you simply pull off of a wall that you're taking cover on, take a quick shot, and slide back into cover. You can do this from either side, left or right, but I find it most effective when the enemy player is to your right because that is where your character naturally looks to. Notice from the enemy player's point of view that the player who is flick shotting is really hard to shoot back at. And now, in the example you're seeing, if you're having trouble with your flick shot and you're finding that you're hitting the walls, find a wall, pump an active out, and just try to get a feel for where your shot is landing because you want it to land on the right of what you're seeing and not on the wall and what this involves is making sure that your camera is more so to the right than to your character now here are some in-game examples where i actually use the flick shot very defensively and you can see just how effective it is in this example you see i get myself into a little bit of trouble here and i slow it down and you see that by flick shotting i concealed myself perfectly got off a shot and even hid from this other character with enough time to recover the next shot is the infamous shotgun roll. This move has received some bad rep in the past, but I believe it to be one of the most effective moves when it's mastered properly. Shotgun rolling occurs when a player shoots and seemingly rolls in a direction at the same time. However, to perform this move, you will notice that you actually need to shoot first and then roll in the direction of your choice. This move's primary purpose is to either create or reduce distance between your opponents and yourself while still getting off shots. Notice in the examples that you're watching that I use shotgun rolling to quickly clean up kills, catch up to opponents who are on the run, and create distance between myself and players who are attacking me. 
Notice in this example that I'm about to shotgun roll back, which is basically insurance to make sure that if this player got off a nice shot, then I would be able to run away. In the clip you're watching now, I shotgun roll forward, which is, gives me just enough time to pick off the enemy player. And in the clip you're about to watch, I shotgun roll backwards in order to pick off a kill, but create distance from my opponents and slip away. Next up is the peak shot. To peak shot, simply aim over cover, quickly fire, and return to cover. In Gears 4, this move is very effective. However, because of the new close quarter combat moves, I recommend that if you slide into cover to peak shot a player, do not do so head on because they could potentially yank you. Instead, try to slide slightly to their side to avoid being grabbed. Also take note that in Gears 4, you can look over cover at a considerable height and still land a very strong shot. This makes the peak shot extra effective if you have a height advantage, and you can notice from this clip that I'm hitting shots that you might think I otherwise would not have been able to. And here's an actual in-game example of me using this to my advantage, and something that I highly recommend that you toy around with online by yourself. Okay. The slide shot is up next, and it occurs when a player slides into cover, cancels their slide, and fires a shotgun shot mid-slide. This move will come naturally after playing for some time, but what it essentially does is cut down a bit of distance if you need to get closer to the enemy in order to get off a stronger shot. I would not recommend sliding directly into the enemy, rather try sliding to something beside them if you choose to use this move. The last shot is the forward shot, or up A shot. This is an aggressive tactic that will allow you to push and damage enemies. To perform it, you need to slide into cover, go forward using A, and shoot. I don't find this move to be as effective or reliable as the other shots, since this one can put you in a lot of danger. You will notice in the video that if you're not careful, your shots will hit the ground, so with a forward shot, you either need to aim your camera slightly up to compensate for the low shot placement that occurs, or you will need to wait about half a second after running forward to shoot in order to place a good shot. So you really have to use this move carefully, and I recommend that if you are going to use it, pull up a private lobby like you see here and just get a feel for this move, because this is also a move that I myself for a long time was not very comfortable doing, so it does you a lot of justice to kind of get used to this before you start using it in-game. And here are a couple examples where you see me using it, but quite frequently you don't see me use this one too often. Now for some general quick tips. First off, I would rarely sacrifice accuracy for speed. You will notice a lot of players wall bounce like crazy. Do not be intimidated by this. Some of the best players will take down these people by easily focusing their aim rather than focusing on their movement. In this game example, notice how I come out on top despite playing horrendously. The reason is because the other player you were watching was so caught up with his bouncing that he forgot to aim. In a nutshell, accuracy is better than speed. Next up is pushing players. If an enemy has a shotgun out and ready, do not underestimate them and push. In Gears 4, there is a significant advantage for defensive players in this sense because they will get off the first shot when you push 9 times out of 10, which is often enough to kill you. Unless you have to push, it is often more desirable to have players push into you, and in the examples you're watching, I'm picking off a lot of kills that you thought I probably wouldn't have been able to just by playing defensively. The next step has to do with shotgun rolling. The reason shotgun rolling has a bad rep is because it gets people killed if they incorrectly roll. If you don't time your rolls properly, a good player will slow down their aiming and finish you off after you've predictably landed. It is very important to make sure that you don't roll at a time when the player is prepared to fire at you after you finish your roll. Instead, try to time your rolls with their shots. Likewise, when you are bouncing, try to time your bounces with the enemy player's shots. Pay close attention to the example I'm showing as I carefully time my bounces in conjunction with this player's shots. As a result, I get off a clean kill and I take almost little to no damage. The final tip has to do with distance. In shotgun battles, it is best to create distance when you are winning since it minimizes the chances of you getting taken out in one or two shots. Conversely, if you are losing or outnumbered and unable to escape, it is best to bite the bullet and cut down distance since you will need to get up close to finish off an opponent who has you weak. Essentially, you're trying to cut down distance if you're going in for those one-shot kills. So that's it for the tutorial. I hope you found this helpful, and if you did, I would really appreciate if you could give me a like uh, on the video. I hope you learned a thing or two, and if you haven't already, check out my channel for more tips, and of course, thank you very much for watching.